you're listening to text me when you get home a comedy podcast that discusses all things true crime and creepy we tell you stories about murder are you picking stuff out your ears no it was just dead itchy because of the <laughs> i'm wearing in ear thingies and it's like dead itchy you were well, have, I got, then... have I got a time stamp already? No, leave I, it in. Name I him checked, and shame I, him. I wasn't picking stuff out my ears. I was rubbing my ear and then checking my butt in to see if there was anything itching my ear. In the I butt. saw you stick your finger in and then look at something and I was like, I was looking not at the on bud. camera. No. <laughs> Don't look on camera. <laughs> I am not picking, picking my ears and there is nothing in my bud. Yeah. Uh, Anywho, we tell you stories about murder, alien abductions, paranormal events and other spooky and macabre stuff like Craig's ear juices. (laughs) I'm Sophie. I'm Juicy Eared Craig. (laughs) And I'm Sean. If you watch us on YouTube or Twitch, then like the video and subscribe. Comment below. Tell us your favourite thing about Craig's Ear juices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the taste. Rank us. Uh, <laughs> rank us in order of attractiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is the most? What? Shag Mary. Is it Shag Mary Kill? Is that right? <laughs> yes. Shag Mary Kill us. <laughs> <laughs> Me, like, trying to look pretty the whole episode now. Like, so. <laughs> only, only turning to my good side. Uh, also just share share the podcast with everybody like literally just share it far and wide except for when i tell people about the podcast i actively tell them not to listen (laughs) why Uh, uh, great great marketing tactic (laughs) well i was talking to my hairdresser about it and she was like oh what's it called i'll have a listen i was like oh no don't because (laughs) it would be awkward if she listened she didn't like it and then i was like oh did you listen and then she was like, oh, uh, yeah. And then I could tell she didn't like it. So you I just, just have to just... find yourself a new hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you trying to hint something? <laughs> it's about time, so. <laughs> uh, anywho, time to get on with today's story from Craig. What are you telling us about today? So uh, this week, uh, strap yourselves in, boys and girls, because this is another disgusting one from me. Well, that's such a shock. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you about the Morova family from the Czech Republic. Um, This is a truly messed up story which inspired the horror movie Orphan. Um, Have you seen Orphan? No. I'm getting... It's not The Orphanage, is it? It's a different movie. Not The Orphanage. That's El Orfante. Is that what you mean? Yeah. No, it's... uh, No, it's a different movie. Um, so this week features cannibalism, child abuse, identity theft, and cults. Um, Fantastic. Which are all part of the Morova family's weird and disturbing narrative. Uh, the crime may sound like something out of a Quentin Tarantino film, but what occurred in this family is real. So, are you ready? Are you strapped in? Yeah. So I'm going to start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is pretty hideous. There's... the. Uh, definitely sort of like listener warning it does feature child abuse not like not extensively I'd, i won't go into loads of detail on it um but it does feature feature child abuse um and it's full of absolute dickheads um <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, I, I, I'm saying that the dickheads are separate from the child abusers there are separate no, no, tier no. of dickheads no yeah Child abusers are the upper echelons of dickheadedness, aren't they? <laughs> um, so I'm going to start on the 7th of May 27, uh, 2007 in Kurim, which is a small village in the Czech Republic. And a man named Edward, which I think in Czech is pronounced Edouard, um, was setting up a new baby monitor. So Edouard was just finished, just finished setting up this baby monitor. And instead of seeing his young son's crib, he saw a boy naked with his arms tied, uh, arms and legs tied up behind him, and he was eating food off a concrete floor. So, can you fucking can you imagine turning like going upstairs, setting it up above the crib, and then going downstairs and getting the screen part and plugging it oh. in, turn it on, and seeing something else entirely? It took a second for me to realize. I was like, "How did he like?" I'm confused. What happened at the time? Yeah. But now I understand. It's connected to something else. So occasionally, it took me a minute. It took me a minute, but I'm there. 
So occasionally in this uh, video stream, he could see a woman's hand coming in from the left-hand side of the video to feed the child. Edouard immediately called the police, realising that the video must have been coming from a similar monitor to his and very close by. Shit. Ugh. So little did Edouard realise the horrors that they would soon uncover. So the police arrived and they started knocking on neighbours' doors and most of the neighbours were co cooperative. They let the police look around and come into the house. Um, but the video and the young boy is of this tiny concrete room and there isn't a lot of information to go by. Eventually, the police come to knock on the door of 31-year-old Clara, who answers the door alongside her 33-year-old sister, Katerina Marie. So, Clara Morova is a single mum of three. She has a nine-year-old son named Jacob, an eight-year-old son named Andre, and a 14-year-old adopted daughter named Anna, who also goes by the name of Annika. Um... Clara has a degree in pedagogy and is a school teacher and her sister Katerina Marie works at a local youth centre. Um, Excuse me, what's pedagogy? I think I think it's the art of teaching. So it's like I think it's a study into how people learn. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Pedagogy. Um, the way people learn. Yeah, correct. It's the method and practice of teaching, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's a school teacher and her sister who lives with her works at a local youth centre. Um, the sisters let the police in and they let them look around and cooperate hap happily until the police noticed a cellar door with a padlock on it. Never a good sign. Um, they... Uh, the sisters flat out refused to let the police open the door, and so the always police... a bad sign. Always a bad sign. <laughs> it is. So the police solicit the help of the local fire brigade, who come and smash the lock off the door, and they find the child from the baby monitor in there. The boy was Clara's eight-year-old son, Andre. The room was full of the boy's excrement and vomit. He was completely naked and completely dehydrated. Jacob and Annika are upstairs crying hysterically. Um, the sisters were immediately arrested and all three children were taken into custody. So, the two boys, Andre and Jacob, are quiet and insular while they're in custody, but eventually they start to talk to the police about the harrowing abuse over the course of the previous year. Uh, the boys don't want to talk to the police about their abuses and often tell them that they feel like they deserved it. It's almost like they don't want to give them any information to get their abusers into trouble. Yeah. Bit of uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Um, eventually, though, the police get the information out of it and the boys reveal a year-long campaign of torture and, sexual ab torture and sexual abuse. Between Clara and her sister, they had beaten them with belts, put cigarettes out on them, sexually abused them and forced them to cut themselves with knives. When they weren't abusing the boys, they kept them locked up in dog cages. Uh, just when the boys couldn't imagine it possibly becoming any worse, they were separated, handcuffed and left in the dark. They were forced to sleep in their own urine and feces and they were locked away so no one could hear their cries. Annika, the adopted child on the other hand, suffered no abuse at all. Um... Which is mad, isn't it? She's abused her mm. own children, but not, not her adopted child. The police um, find her story just as harrowing, though. She'd been adopted by Clara in 2005. So remember, this is 2007. So she'd been adopted by Clara in 2005 after escaping a Norwegian tra child trafficking ring. Ev and even though she was 13, her demeanour intelligence showed traits, traits of infance, infancy, um, probably because of the abuses she suffered. And she's also extremely sick with various ailments. So just a weird fucked up scenario like that, you know, they've been keeping this, her and her sister have been keeping her children in a, you know, in mm. in a horrible state, sometimes in a cellar, sometimes locked up, sometimes in dog cages, um, but being really hideous to them. But if I we go... Get, I still get the, seg the segregation of like, you've done it to the, the two lads, but not to the... It's because she's too old. Well, 
let's go back to 2005 to just just two years prior to the police finding the boy in the basement clara hasn't yet at this time adopted annika so it's just her and her two sons and the three of them have a great life the boys are doing well in school and their father hadn't long left um the the reason the father is cited as leaving as he found is that he found the mother's religious beliefs a little bit intolerable um and also that she was a little bit violent towards him right so yeah clara's at home with the two boys they're going to school they're doing well um everyone seems happy um, i don't know why would you leave if if your partner's been violent to you why, why have would you they left kids? two kids yeah i don't know it makes absolutely no sense to me as a father um katarina the sister brings annika or anna to clara where clara welcomes the orphan with open arms her life had been awful up until now and she's suffering a host of illnesses and diseases including leukemia um and various stomach conditions katarina moves in with the family too to help anna out with annika uh, sorry helps clara out with annika so Clara and Katarina are the sisters. Anna or Annika is the the daughter, the adopted daughter with leukemia. How has she been given custody <clears> of <throat> this this obviously sick, traumatized child? Well, and she obviously struggling to. I mean, obviously struggling, but she's got two children of her own to take care of. Keep what kind of press. Keep the systems <laughs> loud. That's I know. Yeah. Keep thinking on those lines, Sean, because this story. It starts off fucked up, and it gets more fucked up as we go along. Okay. Um, so things change for the boys at this point of Annika moving in. Um, Annika, having a troubled past and little experiences with the loving household, finds Clara's love of the boys intolerable, and she gets very jealous. And because Annika is so upset that Clara pays so much attention to her children, she begins to commit mischief to get Jacob and Andre into trouble, and they start to get punished. <clears throat> um, around this time Annika is also having daily visits to the hospital due to her illnesses and Katerina the sister is the one to take her Clara is never allowed to go to the hospital with her uh, and eventually the girl has to stay in and is unable to sleep it, uh, is unable to speak due to her illnesses um, so Sean you, you, you asked how can a woman go from being this loving mother uh, who adopts an abused and sick child to one who goes on to abuse. That isn't what you asked, but I'm going to pretend you did ask. <laughs> I'll spice it in. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> Re- really awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> so how can a woman go from a loving mother who adopts an abused and sick child to one who then goes on to abuse her own children in the space of just over a year? What you could have done then is if you had done it in a really... Uh, over the top Scouse accent people would have just believed that it was Sean asking it if I just spat all over the microphone <laughs> <laughs> Sean is that you <laughs> <coughs> so um, let's go back to Clara's uh, earlier age uh, earlier life um, so from an early age she had mystical inclinations caused by schizophrenia Um oh. It said, it said that she said that she'd been conceived with a mission assigned by God and her Fucking sister, hell. Katerina, had similar ideas. Uh, both, of them, <laughs> both of them attended university, but Clara was the first to leave home, joining a man older than her with whom she had her children, Jacob and Andre. There's not a lot about Jacob and Andre's dad. Like right. You can't really find any information about him at all. Um, years later, her husband would then abandon her family due to violence, um, and he he cited Clara's character, which is around the same time that Katerina, also a schizophrenic, moves in and brings home a sick child. So she's um, they've both gone to university. Um, they're both schizophrenics. Uh, Clara's life seems to be okay until the father of her children's like fuck this i'm off her sister moves in brings this random sick child um now we've got two schizophrenics in the house and uh 
a traumatized child. A traumatized who, child. Who's prone to jealousy. Yeah. And things start to go downhill from there. You said as well, um, the adopted girl, I can't remember her name, sorry. What's Anna, her name? Anna or Annika. Annika um, was also getting the boys in trouble as well, didn't you? Yeah, she starts creating mischief. Um, the doctor who's treating Annika starts to send Clara texts and emails. He claims to know how to treat Annika well. So Clara meets this doctor in a car park late at night where he shows... Sounds legit. Sounds legit. I trust him. Well, it's completely legit because he shows her his diplomatic passport. I wonder what was going to come out of your mouth He shows her his diplomatic... He unzipped his diplomatic passport. (laughs) And... Annika's medical records. It's just, yeah, so yeah, absolutely legit. Meeting a, a doctor in a car park. Um, Clara completely falls for it. Uh, she trusts this man completely, and soon Annika is allowed to come home with her. So this doctor, so she's been in hospital, um, and Clara's not been allowed to see her, and Katerina's been the one that's been visiting her. Um. But the doctor starts texting her and emailing her and things, and then he's like, "Come, like, come and meet me." And he meets the doctor in this dark, <laughs> this dark car park, uh, and says, "Look, this is me. I'm a doctor, um, and here's Annika's medical records." Um. So, she's Annika's allowed to come home, and Clara in his uh, doc. Uh, Clara gets emails and texts from the doctor giving. Uh, giving Clara explicit instructions on how to treat Annika's illnesses. Uh, One of the treatments is to rub Annika's body all over to help ease the pain, but especially around her crotch and genitals for several hours at a time because that would make make Annika's pain less and she would feel better. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So How old old is Annika, did you say? Not that any age would be okay, but... thirteen. Jesus Christ. Um, Clara receives a text telling her that Annika had been abducted from the hospital um, shortly after. Um, So Annika, she's still in and out of hospital. uh, And then she gets a text from the doctors telling her that that Annika has been abducted abducted from the hospital. And she completely freaks out. She's really worried. She doesn't know where Annika is at all. Um. So, any guess you two as to what's going on? At all? I'm still disgusted by the prescribed um, rubbing of a 13-year-old child. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, no idea? I'm a little confused, to be Is honest. it human trafficking? It's not human trafficking. Um. So, it turns out that Annika wasn't in hospital at all. Shock. She was actually on holiday in the mountains... Oh, and by the way, she wasn't a child. She was a 31-year-old woman named Barbara Skrilova. That was that was going to be my guess. You interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing I was just going to say. So Clara, Clara believes this is a 13-year-old girl, but she's not. She's a woman called Barbara Skrilova who graduated from a university of dramatic arts and was good friends with Clara's sister, Katerina. So this girl pretend this woman pretending to be a thirteen year old girl with leukemia is just fucking like pretending to be and also pretending to be a victim of a child sex trafficking ring, um, to be adopted by <clears throat> a woman who is uh, the same age as a. All I know is I would like to know her skincare routine. <laughs> well, her skincare routine may be something to do with the um, the fact that she suffered from a condition called hypopituitism. P- hypopituitarism. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> ah, Hold on. Hypo, hypopituitarism. So it's a an overactive or underactive pituitary gland. So hypopituitaryism. Hypopituitaryism. <laughs> it's really fucking hard to say. And what um, does that do? So it's a disorder that dis- it delays her physical growth, which made her look like a girl when she was in her 30s. Um, oh. So did the system know that she was a 31-year-old woman? I think so, yeah. 
Yeah. Fucking hell. There isn't a huge amount about her sister, like all of the case and all of the... It's really it's really hard as well to find tons of information about the case because most of the articles are in Czech news and Czech... Mm-hmm. Like, even the Wikipedia art- article is tiny and it's in Czech. <laughs> so you have to yeah. translate it. Can I just confirm that I'm following the story so far? Yeah, this is probably so- a good... A good um overview yeah so man at home sets up his baby cam sees child abuse on so, baby cam in 2007 that's 2007 yeah but then they they go to the house the police find it and annika 13 year old girl the girl that's crying girl, upstairs yeah is that annika that's annika yeah, yeah that's, ba- actually, that's turns out- barbara yeah that's a 31-year-old woman called Barbara. <laughs> and, okay. uh, and and get this, this is how convincing it is. The police also think she's police a 13-year-old really. girl. Okay, so the two sisters at home, one of them knows that Annika is Barbara. The yep. other one doesn't know. Yeah, the, her uh, mum, her adopted mum doesn't know. Okay, which is Clara. Clara, yeah. Clara, yeah. <laughs> which is Clara. Uh, and Clara also has two sons, which they are abusing yes yep um at what point do we find out that annika is barbara so i've just told you <laughs> that's i'm joking that's i'm joking me. so i've i've jumped back in time so 2007 when the boys are found and um but so when's it revealed the, i jumped the, the, back the world it's not at the moment so right, i okay. haven't got that oh, so, am i ruining the story okay, so sorry. i jumped back in time to 2005 <laughs> Um, as to like, as to sort of the fuck ups and weird shit that was going on. So, so why, so why is the doctor? So the, does the doctor believe that she's a, a thirteen year old girl? So at this nobody point? really knows who the doctor is. <laughs> oh, so has she been like to her friend on the pub? Will you please tell her to rub my fanny? I've got, I've got <laughs> this, I've got this, I've got this thirteen year old girl suffering with leukemia and this fucking needs... died with hiccups over like. I know cure for that. I'm a doctor. Just I'll see. No, in my head, it's Barbara's mate. He's like, Ooh, yeah. you I know, really want her to touch me up. Yeah, I quite like this, Clara. Just get her to rubbers for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> rubbers. <laughs> um. So yeah, I jumped back to 2005, and sort of now I'm sort of progressing back to 2007. Where at the moment, the 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 kid was found on camera. Yeah. Um. So yeah, at this point in 2005-ish, Clara uh, doesn't know where Annika is. She's like, she's been abducted from hospital, apparently. She's pure on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but she's on holiday in the mountains, 31, 31-year-old Barbara. Barb's gone to Marbs. She just needs a bit of a rest from all the rigorous rubbing she's been received in. Um, so Barbara... I believe you mean cure... Uh, sorry, yes, cure for, lo- for leukemia. <laughs> Prescribed cure. Um, so Barbara, for most of her adult a- adult life, she posed as a girl. She tricked dozens of people, dozens of people into adopting her. Not just Clara. This is like a serial offence. Uh, she's just like an ultimate <clears throat> con woman. Yeah, and she manipulates authorities to pre- to prevent her from being tried for her deceptions. Uh, to, t- to trick Clara, she went a step further and she got breast reduction and liposuction so, so, that she could, so she could look even more like a 13-year-old child. Uh, Clara should have clicked because this supposed 13-year-old Norwegian orphan would speak to her in perfect Czech without any hint of a foreign accent. Um, but Clara is often disca- described as a weak-minded woman who is easily manipulated. So the emails, when the police investigated the emails and texts that Clara was receiving from the doctor were all actually coming from Annika and Katerina's phones. Fucking hell. So, yeah. But she did meet a man in a car park who said he was the doctor. So this is all 2005 now, by the way. Yeah. I'm now going to jump to 2006 and Clara, um, Annika's back. (laughs) Uh, and Clara wants to adopt 13-year-old Annika, but the doctor says that adoption wouldn't be successful because the boys Jakob and Andre were being so mean to Annika. Um, so the doctor via email suggests that Clara needs to fix the boys' behaviour and their evil spirits with some therapy. Evil spirits? Yeah. 
He recommends tough love, physical punishments, and strict discipline. So Clara starts to do exactly that. So this this doctor has prescribed um Captain Rubberlot. Has, <laughs> yeah, has, has Do- now Doctor just... Ru- Doctor Rubber um has prescribed this her this woman who's been diagnosed as schizophrenic, that her children are evil and she needs to um treat them tough love. Tough believe, love, and, physical and punishment, punishment and strict discipline. Jesus Christ. This so, isn't far this isn't far enough back this, in time for this me. This is mental. This story is mental. I'm starting to be suspicious. I, I don't oh, think of the doctor. I don't think he's a doctor, you know, guys. Do you not? Know? I'm just <laughs> I'm putting it out there. The fact I don't I'm on to uh I'm on to a rat. So Clara now starts beating the boys with belts, wooden spoons, and she starts locking them in dog cages. So so what was there any evidence presented for the boys' evil behaviour? Or she's uh, just taking it on the word of this doctor and Annika? Yeah, it's just that, entirely that. So by the summer of 2006, the doctor suggests that the punishment isn't working, and so the boys needed shock therapy. Uh, the Why do- is he doing this? I don't know. I don't get the long game of any of these people at all. <laughs> it's mad, in it? No. The doctor tells Clara that she needs to stop acting like their mother, and she needs to take them to this cottage in a place called Viverska Bitiskia uh, for the prescribed therapy. So she takes the boys up to this cottage. Um, at the cottage, they, they're they met by a man named Jan Scala, who is Barbara's brother in real life, but yeah. they, she doesn't know that, and a man named Jan Turek. Um, I'll just collectively call them the Jans. The Jans. <laughs> and neither of these guys Jan are the doctor. Squared. No, not according to... Clara doesn't know, but if they are, she met the, she met him in a car she park, him, she, yeah. in a dark car park, so she might not have known. Did he have like a really high collared coat on and a big <laughs> wide brimmed hat? Yeah. I imagine him to be wearing a, um, what do they call it? Like the, uh, oh, the one where it's like the stripper coat a with mac. all the pocket, with all the pockets. A mac. Dirty mac. Yeah, a mac. Yeah, and then he has just like, um, like a stethoscope in one pocket, <laughs> a thermometer in another a pocket, like just Lube. fill to the brim, you know, with <laughs> I'm a medical doctor. apparatus. Check out the goods. <laughs> yeah. Check out the goods. Um, so the two Yans and also a woman named Hannah, Bab- Hannah Basoba um, are at the cottage. So it's important to note that Jan Turek and Hannah Basoba were already known to Clara from years prior when she met them at a summer camp. Um, yeah, I know it gets weird. <laughs> I mentioned the summer camp specifically because remember that I said Clara's partner left her because of her religious weirdness yeah. and violence, and now suddenly she sat at a strange th- shock therapy um, session in a cottage in the woods with two people that she apparently knew from a summer camp. So I think the connection may be that the group knew each other through their religious beliefs, and the summer camp might have been some sort of religious meetup yeah um this is view uh listener discretion is definitely advised at this point because it was at this shock therapy at the cottage that the two boys suffer the most horrific abuse Uh, the boys are kept in their tiny uh, dog cages where they can't stand up or hardly move they're not allowed to speak to anyone and they must eat their food off the floor and defecate in the same cage too Clara starts to dunk the boys' heads in water while Barbara holds their hands behind their, behind their backs for so long that they think they're going to drown. The boys also suffer sexual abuse and beatings from the two Jans. The men, Jan Turek and Jan Scala, make the boys fight each other regularly. They put sacks over the boys' faces and they burn them with cigarettes. But all of this pales in comparison to the ultimate torture the boys have to endure. The boys have strips of their own buttock flesh cut away from them before the men burn the open wounds with cigarettes and then they finally force the boys to eat their own flesh as well as eating some of it themselves. What the fuck? It's just just no kind of logic to any of this at all. There should be, but it's just like everything about this case is just off the fucking wall. It's mad, isn't it? (laughs) 
It's like, like what is the what is what is they want to get out of this? <sighs> They're obviously all in cahoots about this. They all know that Barbara, that Annika is Barbara, who's except, except Clara. Year old. Clara doesn't know. Except for Clara, except for everyone else is in this, in on this. Yeah. And the boys um, as well still think that she's her sister, their sister. From from the the boys' like point of view, did it literally go from like loving best mum of the year ever to like uh, yeah complete abuse? Like there's no there's no signs of any abuse or anything, and, beforehand. and beforehand, and then it and the, rapidly doctor, escalates in a year. The doctor okay. jumped in, says so he needs to physically abuse them to correct their behaviour. Yeah, then it wasn't working. Yeah. So there was there was a slight gradient, I suppose, mm. but yeah, that's about it. So this uh, this shock therapy lasts eight days. Um, the boys at this point still believe Fuck that you know. Annika is their thirteen year old adopted sister, and that they're being tortured for being mean to her. The men pretend to torture Annika too, to reinforce this facade. And the most distressing part of it all is that the boys agree to more torture so that their sister doesn't have to endure any. <laughs> Fucking, that's the ultimate sadness. Is these two boys? I just, so like, I just don't, I just don't, I just don't get what they what they have to gain from all of this at all. No, the two lads as well. Love Jesus, like, please don't hurt Annika. Just do me more. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. How old did you say the boys were? Uh. Uh, I said at the top of the episode, I think the seven and nine at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is awful. I think I'm going to say this. I'm going to just, this is, I know it's early days. I think this is your worst one yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I know. I am sorry. So, so this is, <laughs> <laughs> so this is August. Um, and we now into September, the boys have had their shock therapy. Clara tries to adopt annika again um and the doctor agrees but in the czech republic you are required to submit dna during the adoption process and the doctor wouldn't allow this to happen um instead the group somehow managed to get a local child actor to stand in court as annika during the adoptive adoption process and give a sample the process works and clara officially adopts 13 year old annika officially at this point so you asked earlier, is like, how does this happen? This is how they happen. They just bring in an imposter. <laughs> Presumably, presumably at this point, still not knowing that she's a 31-year-old woman. But what, for, why did they think that they couldn't? Why did they think that, uh, for, the, for the one that didn't know that she was secretly Barb's, uh, why because, did they think they needed an imposter? I don't know, because the doctor says so. So maybe because the DNA would have proven something. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I understand why Barbara wouldn't want to. But I'm just trying to think for the person who was adopting her that didn't know that she was secretly Barbara, you would have been like, why? I imagine it's probably just they got paid someone off at this point to just stand up in trial. No, it's but... Meant, it's meant my, to be a 13-year-old person, isn't it? My question is yeah. what there is... There, there is what, who's the one? Clara. Clara's, Clara. Clara's mum, yeah. Clara, uh, why would she agree to? Yeah, why? Have... Like, she doesn't know that that she's secretly Barbara, right? No. And she's going to the adoption courts, and she's saying, "I want to ado- adopt my little Anna." And they're like, the doctor's like, "No, you're going to need to get a secret, uh, a spy version of Anna." Yeah. At this and point, that... I would be like, "Why?" Maybe she didn't. She was told that you need DNA DNA, and then they actually when they went to court it was someone else who actually provided the DNA and she didn't but know but they're remember. saying that she went to court the, the other yeah, one yeah this child actor stood up in court and said yeah I'm Annika and I want to be adopted by Clara but if the mother wasn't there if Clara wasn't there to say that that is an Annika but she was oh, like no, I think, during I think the adoption she was. process yeah I think she was there I think um, but you remember as well, Clara is a woman of weak mind, and this doctor who's told her she has leukemia and she's she needs rubbing. This isn't the worst thing. She told her that she needed rubbing for hours at a time to cure her, her leukemia. She's also mm-hmm. just spent eight days torturing her own her own sons. So, yeah. like this woman is batshit crazy. Yeah. So anyway, but now she is officially Annika's mum. Um, <laughs> so how how old's Clara at this point? 
Uh, she's the same age as Barbara. <laughs> she's 31. Right, I guess she doesn't sure we covered that. So she's adopted yeah. that you're the, the mother of a 31-year-old child. She, she might be, this is the following year from, so she might, this is 2006, so she might be 32 now. 32. But so is Barbara. <laughs> um, and her sister is two years older at 34. Um, so, yeah, um, Annika's coming home now, officially um, Clara's daughter. Um, so Clara sends the boys off to live with Katerina for a little while so she can double down on the care of Annika. <laughs> Lots more rubbing. <sighs> yeah. rub a dub dub So it's now January 2007 and the Doctor has found the family a new house and the five of them move in together. Clara, the two boys, Annika and Clara's sister Katerina. During this time, the boys are being mean to Annika again. So they spend course, nearly... Yeah nearly a full year in the cement cellar while Annika has a nice bright bedroom full of toys. Um, It's just every time, every, every time I was reading stuff about this, I was like, this is mad. This is a 31 year old woman. Mm. Um, And it was this year in May, 2007, when we arrive back at the top of our episode with the sisters being arrested and the children in air quotes being taken into care. With the three children, while the three children were in a safe house, Annika runs away and disappears. Um, she Shock runs. Horror. I know, yeah. She runs to Denmark and then Oslo, where she shaves her head and claims to be a thirteen-year-old boy called Adam Farner. <laughs> uh, Adam's placed in a youth centre after claims of ho- ho- that he ran away from horrible abuse from his father. It's like by December. Adam, again in air quotes, has gone missing again, and there were missing reports all over Norway. Adam is finally found in a northern, in a far northern town and placed in a youth sh- shelter again before being transported back to Oslo. So, are we are we all on the same page? <laughs> are you totally confused yet? I'm, I'm not confused. Just fucking why? Why Norway? Why? Of all the places. It's, so remember it's miles that, away. Remember as well, she said that she was uh, a 13 a year old yeah, child. But she tra- wasn't actually from there. So why run away to a place you fake that you're from? <laughs> so you don't speak the language. You don't know the customs. You don't know anything about the place. But that's the place you chose to run to and then change your identity anyway. Yeah. Where would and, you and, run and gender. to? Where would you run to, Sean? Um, if I was running anywhere, somewhere sunny, I think. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you run to, Sophie? Uh, <coughs> I would run to Crossgates near me because there's a Domino's, there's a KFC, and there's a dessert shop. Just, is that, that so? You're trying to evade the law. You're gonna. She's gonna run there. Down but the road. She's gonna walk home <laughs> <laughs> on taxi. Um. So now we all know where we are. I'm going to screw things up even more. I'm going to introduce another man called Yosef Skrilla, who's actually Barbara's father. Um, so he's allegedly the mysterious leader leader of an offshoot of the Grail movement um, called the Ants. So the Grail I movement... You mentioned the cult at the start. Yeah. So the Grail movement is a religious movement. Um, of course it is. And they do exist, but there's no... to do with the Holy Grail? Uh I think so. Um, so there's there's no actual evidence that the offshoot, the ants, exist. So I'm going to be very careful in my references to them, because at the time of the reporting, um, the there was a lot of sensationalist media reports in in uh, the Czech Republic that named the Grail movement as the reason behind all of this, and the Grail mov- movement successfully sued the. Right. Um, so the Grail Movement is an organisation which originated in Germany in the late 40s and it's inspired by the work of self-proclaimed messiah Oscar Ernst Bernhardt. Um, the, Grail, the Grail Movement's a spiritual movement dedicated to the dissemination and spread of the work in the light of truth, the Grail message by Abd Ru Shin, also known as Oscar Ernst Bernhardt. Um, oh, yeah, he sued him, did he? <laughs> he did. Um, most members reside in 16 countries across Europe, primarily Germany and France, with the Grail movement reporting hundreds of members in Britain and the US. It can also be found in Canada, Brazil, 
and currently established in 22 African countries, Australia, New Zealand, and Ecuador. So worldwide, there are approximately 10,000 members of the Grail Movement. Um, it's really important to note um, that Arthur, uh, Arthur Zablukal, chief rep representative of the, of the Grail Movement in the Czech Republic, where it has about 1,500 followers, said of the Ants subgroup that these that these people belong to. Uh, we broke with these people 11 years ago after they gradually added to the Grail message their own imaginings and fantasies. At that, okay. at that point, there were 15 of them, and I sent them a letter telling them that they were no longer considered part of the Grail movement. So... Uh, it's thought that the two men, the two the two Jans, Jans. and the yeah. woman in the cottage, were part of the ants, um, right? Formerly part of the Grail movement. Jan Scarlett, who is Barbara's brother, Jan Turik, and Hannah Basoba. Um, one of the members of this group was called Marti Martina Fauna, who had a son called Adam Fauna, who. Okay it is believed, let Barbara use her own son's identity to evade the authorities. Mm. So, you know, remember, <laughs> Joseph Skrilla is Barbara's dad. He's the head of the ants. Um, one of the members of the ants is Martina Fauna, whose son's called Adam. So, what I think happened, so it was Adam's passport which but, which was used to smuggle Barbara into Denmark and right. Norway. Um, while in Norway, it said that a Norwegian couple adopted the 12-year-old Adam. <laughs> they gave him a home and family, and then one day while leaving school, a police car pulled up in front of the school and took Adam away. Um, so, Sorry, is this the actual Adam or no, fake Adam? This is Barbara. Right, okay, cool. This is Barbara Adam. It was actually the police that took her, and right, okay. she got... Um, she got sent back to the Czech Republic, uh, the town of Brno, which is right next to Karim. Um, so back in Brno, uh, the court, the, the now in court, uh, and the court heard graphic details about the abuse, the abuse of the boys from their own accounts. Clara, Katerina, Barbara, Jan Skala, Jan Sturik, and Hanna Basoba were all on trial. Uh, the two boys had told judges how their mother and relatives had stubbed cigarettes out on their bare skin, whipped them, and tried to drown them. They'd also tossed, talk, told them about the sexual abuse and how they had to cut themselves with knives. Um, the terrified youngsters said they were kept in cages or handcuffed to tables when they weren't in the cages and made to stand in their own urine for days. Uh, the state prosecutor said that their aim was to make the boys blindly serve their religious goals. The judge said when he sentenced the women, their aim was to create a person with completely broken will. Andre and Jakob were repeatedly, repeatedly psychologically and physically tyrannised and held in locked rooms. So, this is this is sort of the end of the of the case. the The biggest kick in the teeth to this of all of this is so Hannah Basova, Basova who was only really involved in the cottage abuse. And Jan Skirlo, who was only really involved in the cottage abuse, were both sentenced to just seven years each. Jan, Jan Turek, who was part of the, that abuse, was sentenced to five years. Clara, uh, the mother, was sentenced to nine years in prison after she said she was manipulated by Katerina and Barbara. Katerina, who manipulated her sister, was sentenced to ten years. And finally, Barbara was sentenced to just five years in prison. What? what why? What the <laughs> fuck? Barbara, who instigated the abuse, pretended to be a 13-year-old girl, like, abused the kids them herself by helping to drown them, ran away to Norway, pretended to be a boy, got adopted as a boy. Like, it's, it's fucking... The whole case is mental. And all of these people... Are out of jail now. It's mad. So it? I was just having a look <clears throat> uh, at what you can get for fraud, because surely this is some kind of fraud. And it says federal charges can lead to ten years or more in federal prison. Now this is well, is that federal that the American wouldn't? Yeah, US, but still. Yeah. 
You'd at least expect yeah. minimum, not including all of the other stuff that she did. The yeah. fact that was it only one of them got ten years is is disgusting. I read uh, I read quite a lot about possible reasons for the for the abuse and and everything and and some of the teachings of the Grail movement are that children should be obedient yeah and treated with a tough hand but what they also what a lot of people think is that um uh Joseph Skriller um who want he wanted to create a new child messiah in in his own daughter and take the center of the movement because the grail movement is quite it's really decentralized so they they kind of work in their own regional capacities Excelled. yeah um but he wanted to sort of create a new you know like child messiah from barbara so I don't know what sort of abuses she's grown up with because obviously this guy's fucking mental. And then all of these followers from this subgroup of his, the ants, are obviously all fucking mental as well because they're, you know, abusing kids in cottages. Yeah, even if you take that baseline of that children should be obedient, these kids have done nothing wrong. Oh, no, absolutely not. You know, they, they, even if you say, it's like, you know, the, the, the child should be punished... Even you're, on, the, on the basic of the logic, the children haven't done anything wrong to even deserve any kind of punishment. No. Let alone the punishment so severe. It's mad, isn't it? So I, it, it is a horrible story, and it's a mental story. Like the, the, There's like five mental arms to the story. So I thought I'd round it up nicely with um, Andre and Jacob now. So eventually the boys were adopted by a family in the USA and apparently are doing very, very well. Good. Yeah, but, and if you think about it, 2007, they were seven and nine. So these are adults now. Adults living in America. So, yeah, good, hopefully. Good soon, wherever they are anyway. Yeah, hopefully they have long and happy lives and can forget yeah. about this horrible year that they had. Bless them. That is so awful. It's just there's so many strands of madness that just like kind of like coalesced into this fucking mess. I know. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures now. There are pictures on the internet of the the camera from the uh, thingy, oh, right, but okay. I obviously didn't include them because no. Um. So, but wait till you get to see Barbara in her different forms. It's mad. I already had a peek. <laughs> did, did you? I okay, did. I'm ready to share when you. Yeah, so just uh, for our YouTube and Twitch followers, we're going to show you some pictures. If you are listening on any of the podcast channels, go over to our Instagram, follow us. We will be posting the pictures at some point. Um, we are at TextMePod on Instagram. So Clara Merlovra and Barbara... God, that's not right, but never mind. And Clara scroll over <laughs> by text me when you get home. This is the <laughs> Q-Rim case. So here is a picture of the boys, Andre and Jacob, and Clara and Barbara. That's Barbara there. Even Please. that picture, like, she looks... It, now you know the manipulation and you look at that picture... It's it, wild. It is, isn't it? Like Yeah, so it's like a family photo that we're looking at <clears throat> with the um with uh Clara with her arm around Barbara and what? then the two boys but their faces are blurred out, all on like some sort of like canoe or kayak trip. So looking at that though, you can see why she was manipulated, can't you? Yeah, she just looked like a child. She definitely doesn't look like a thirty one year old. No. So this is Clara in custody. Look at them eyebrows. They are early 200s all over. They are the thinnest brows I have ever seen. Early 2000s, you mean? Yeah, that's what I said. Said 200s. <laughs> <laughs> 200, 200 AD. I know what but I But if you're in that picture there, or if you go back to that picture, in the background, you see that's... Barb. That's Barbara, yeah. Is it Barb in the background? Yeah. 
that is Katerina, uh, her sister. But looking at these, looking at the people other than Barbara, this is one of the Jans, Jan Turek. <laughs> Sorry, you wanted to go back to Katerina. No, no, but they just look like normal. Like They don't look like depraved mental people, do they? They never do. Yeah, that's the bit that shocks me every every week is you think, oh, I would trust this person. This is uh, Jan Turek. Um, this is Barbara's brother and Jan oh Skurla. He <laughs> yes, he I know who. He, I know who. He, I know who he looks like. <laughs> he looks like someone we all know. <laughs> <laughs> is the hair color correct or incorrect? That's what we think. Um, it needs to be a little bit lighter, I think. Cool. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> Uh, and this is Hannah Basova, the other woman who was in the cottage. And this is the various faces of Barbara Skrullova. Remember, in all of these pictures, she is in her 30s. Sorry, just to clarify, you didn't mention the story where she was in the Adams family as Uncle Fester. <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's Adam. <laughs> I guessed as much. Yeah, that's Adam, apparently. Uncle Fester. He's, it's, it's Uncle fucking Fester in that bottom it's right. It's terrifying. There is a very it's... Uncle fester photo. Oh, dear. Is that, but if you go, like, look at those four pictures plus this one, it's like... Yeah. For the top two may be the same person, but the rest of them are, the are all different people. Different. Yeah. They? Mm. Yeah, it's this horrible. is a, not a flattering photo of our Barb. Yeah. And that's it. It's quite a short one for me. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. But you definitely packed a lot of horribleness in. So, you know, well Good. done. Well Good done. stuff. Good. I'm stopping. Okay. Okay. So, that's it for today. We um, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> An absolute crazy story. Yeah. Absolutely but mental. I know the boys endured absolutely horrific horrific torture but they escaped which is yeah it's quite different to most of my stories <laughs> yeah 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 uh, that, that is true that is true in this, in this regard that is true yeah you're right you're right i don't yeah. feel like the dickheads got justice though none of them no not at all no not not one bit yeah. not one bit um anyhow remember be safe and text me when you get home. Bye. Bye. Bye.